In this video, we will recap the continuous time Fourier series, the continuous time Fourier transform, and the properties of the Fourier transform. And then we'll outline how to extend these concepts to discrete time signals. Let us start by recapping the Fourier series. Let us say that we have a periodic signal. It can be any periodic signal that you like, you have any period that you'd like. Let us say that it could be a rectangular wave, a triangular wave, and here I'm going to pick a periodic replication of the Mexican hat. Over a period, this function is equal to 1 minus t squared e to the power of minus t squared over 2. And the period is equal to 2 pi, and from here on, we're going to denote this period by capital T. We can approximate this function by a weighted sum of cosines and sines plus a constant term A0. The coefficients that multiply these cosines and, and sines, bk's and, and, and ck's, and also A0, are very straightforward to compute. There are formulas to compute them. Let us start with A0. A0 is the average of the signal over a period. So it's 1 over capital T, the interval from 0 to capital T of the signal. Unfortunately, we cannot, or it would be very hard for us to compute this analytically, but fortunately, we compute this numerically, and there's no problem. The formulas for BKs are very similar, but we have to first multiply by this signal by cosine of 2 pi over capital T times T. Since capital T is 2 pi, it's simply multiplying the signal by cosine of T. Then we take the, the average of this signal over a period, x of T times cosine of T, and that's basically 1 over capital T, and equal from 0 capital T of x of T cosine of T, and we cannot forget at the end to multiply by 2. So for B1, we obtain a given value if we do this. We can now compute the same for B2, but for B2, instead of multiplying by cosine of t, we multiply by cosine of 2t. And then we can also do the same for computing B3, where we, instead of multiplying by cosine of t or cosine of 2t as we did before, we multiply by cosine of 3t. The formulas to compute the ck's are also very, very similar, but instead of multiplying by cosine, we multiply by a sine. Now, to compute this, it will take a lot of time and we don't need it, because we know that the function is even, and we know that if for even functions, the ck's are all zero. After we have computed the coefficients a0, bk's, and ck's, which in this case are zero, to construct the approximate signal, we just need to add to a0 b1 times cosine of t, then b2 times cosine of 2t, and then b3 times cosine of 3t. It is remarkable with just three coefficients, b1, b2, b3, plus the constant term a0, we can get such an accurate approximation of the signal we started with. However, it's not perfect. You can especially notice this around sharp transitions of the regional function. How can, we how can we improve the quality of our approximation? Well, we need here higher frequency cosines and sines to take care of these details. In other words, we have to increase capital N, where capital N is the number of cosines and sines that we consider, whereas up until now we have considered three. If we increase capital, capital N from 3 to 6, then from 6 to 9, and then from 9 to 12, we see that we get better and better approximations. And we know that if we let N, capital N, converge to infinity, we will exactly obtain the signal. If we now put our engineering cap and look at what we have learned from an engineering perspective, this is great. From a periodic function, we can easily compute a few numbers, and from these numbers, approximate the original periodic function. These numbers are associated with the coefficients of sines and cosines that have certain frequencies, 2 pi over capital T times k, represented here in the x-axis of the plot on the right-hand side. We can then represent a periodic function in a much sparser or compact way. In this case, with only four real numbers, we can obtain a very good approximation of the periodic replication of the Mexican hat. And we can do this for any periodic function, for instance, also for the rectangular wave. 
Proper adaptations of this idea are key, for instance, to compress images, sounds, etc. However, if we now put our mathematician hat, and I admit that the mathematicians can sometimes be quite annoying, there are two things we might want to improve. First, we want to exactly represent rather than approximate this periodic function. As we have discussed, this entails having a representation with an infinite number of sines and cosines. There is a technical detail that will not be stressed too much here, but this exact approximation is only valid at points at which the function is continuous. Another point, but this one is mostly for the sake of elegancy, is that rather than talking about cosines and sines and coefficients a0, bk and ck's, we can just consider a sequence of complex coefficients ak and write the original signal as a sum of as a weighted sum of complex exponential signals multiplied by this complex coefficients ak. The complex coefficients ak can be written in terms of the previous coefficients as ak equals bk minus j ck over 2. Note that when the ck's are 0, as it is the case when the periodic function is even, the ak's are purely real, so in this slide we can still represent ak's as real numbers. Let us now see what happens to the Fourier coefficients if we change the period of the periodic signal. Say that we have a basis function, which is for instance this rectangular denoted by x bar. Suppose that we periodically replicate it with a given period leading to a periodic signal x of t. If we compute the Fourier coefficients ak of xt, we obtain the coefficients depicted in blue on the right hand side. As in the previous slide, the independent axis on the right hand side contains the frequencies of the complex exponentials these coefficients ak multiply, which are given by 2 pi over capital TK. For convenience, the coefficients ak were multiplied by the period capital T. Also plotted here in orange is a special function capital X of frequency omega that depends only on the original basis function x hat, which is periodically replicated. If we plot the coefficients of periodic functions that replicate the original basis function with varying period, we see that this orange function is an invariant. The only thing that happens when we change the period is that the coefficients ak multiplied by the corresponding period are different samples from this orange function that works as an envelope of these Fourier coefficients. And actually, each different basis function x hat has a different orange function, which you denote by the envelope. The same conclusions are thus derived for any different basis function which is periodically replicated. The Fourier coefficients of the periodic replication are samples of this envelope function that only need that only depends on the original basis function. The way this envelope is defined was by integrating the signal multiplied by exponential of minus j omega t in a period, but we can say that the basis function is zero outside of the period and integrate instead from minus infinity until infinity. And this envelope is nothing more than the Fourier transform. It is something characteristic of each basis function, which is aperiodic. This is the pair signal and Fourier transform for the triangular basis function that we have seen. A good news is that pretty much as we could recover a periodic signal from its Fourier coefficients, also now we can recover the original signal from its Fourier transform. And there, there is a formula for this that we will not stress here. Another good news is that since we are integrating from minus infinity until infinity, we do not need to restrict ourselves to signals that are zero outside a given bounded interval. 
This definition of Fourier transform also applies to signals that converge to zero when time goes to infinity while not being necessarily zero as time increases to infinity or decreases to minus infinity. There are several functions for which we can compute analytically the Fourier transform and as a final note, do not forget that although in this short recap video almost all the considered functions are even and thus the Fourier transform is real, for a general non-even function the Fourier transform is a complex function, so we need to plot both the real and the imaginary part or alternatively the absolute value and the phase. There are also many properties of the Fourier transform which allow us to compute Fourier transforms of elaborate signals from Fourier transforms of simple basic signals. For instance, if we already know the Fourier transforms of signals x and y, and we want to compute the Fourier transform of a weighted sum of x and y, that is simply the weighted sum of the Fourier transforms. If we want to compute the Fourier transform of the convolution between x and y, that is simply the product of the Fourier transforms. And there are also many other properties that can help us to the same effect. And this brings us to the goal of today. We want to translate all these concepts to discrete time signals. In particular, for periodic signals, can we express them as a sum of sines and cosines? For aperiodic signals, is there something analogous to Fourier transforms? And finally, what are the properties?